Hello, hello again to my beautiful AI enthusiasts. Today I'll show you how you can transform your Google Sheets, your spreadsheets to the most powerful database, PostgreSQL, and you'll be doing it with zero knowledge on this database. So spreadsheets are very, very good and have been used in a lot of varieties to solve business problems, to store data. But at some point, you will easily hit the limit when your spreadsheets start to grow and you want to perform some expensive operation like searching, like filtering. And that is why at one point, if you have a really big Google Sheets or spreadsheet, you need to transform it to a Postgres database. Now, we have some prerequisites we need to go through this tutorial. The first one, uh, we'll be using NIT8, of course, to build this small agent. We'll need to connect our Google Sheet. So we'll have a valid Google account in order like to create a Google Sheet. And we'll be connecting it to our N8N. We'll need a Postgres database. Uh, we'll need a hosted one. I'll show you how we can create a hosted one easily. We need an open API key because we'll be using OpenAI to create these queries that we need to, to access the database. So for those people who are not familiar with Postgres, if you are familiar, you can skip this small part. Postgres SQL is like a super powered spreadsheet system. And instead of single sheets, it organizes data in tables that connect uh, think of it as a Google Sheet with superpowers and it's designed to handle massive amounts of data without slowing down. And unlike spreadsheet, it enforces rules to keep your data clean and consistent. So PostgreSQL is completely free to use and trusted by companies like Apple and Instagram. So the question you might be asking yourself is why are we even bothered to transform our data from spreadsheet to Postgres. So here I have few reasons and uh, let's go through them. The first one is speed. Let's say you have a spreadsheet with millions of rows. The speed it will take to find, to filter rows will extremely be slow. But with Postgres, we can find information in millions of rows in just milliseconds. And we have reliability. It won't crash or corrupt your data like spreadsheet might. So in spreadsheet, it's easy to modify data and just go. And it won't actually tell you, oh, this was a number. This was a, this value was actually money value. And you just, you just entered a string. But with Postgres, it always notify you when you did something wrong. The third one is connection. You can connect it easily to related information, customers to order. Uh, it's multi-user and we c in, in terms of automation, you can automatically update, calculate and maintain your data. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. It has security and it has growth. Start small, but grow with your need without requiring redesign. So, here I have some common Postgres operations that you might need to know before. I said you have, you don't need to have uh, knowledge about database, but this is just six, but we'll be actually using two of them, six operations. The first one is create table. So in Postgres, we store data in tables as well. And to create table, we use create query. And the second one is to add new rows to tables. We use insert query. The fourth one is select, is to select the data from our database, from our table. And the fourth one is to update. The fifth one is to delete. The sixth one is to join, which is to combine data from multiple tables. So we won't be going through all of them. If you are interested, you can go ahead and uh, search on the internet how like database in Postgres work. We're just going to dive into how we can transform our Google Sheets to Postgres easily with N8N. 
So now that we have some knowledge on PostgreSQL, how powerful it is and how to perform the operations, now it's time to dive into our video's goal to transform Google Sheets to Postgres. We won't actually be running any of these queries. We will just let OpenAI's GPT model choose which uh, query is suitable for now. So here I'm going to clear my workflow i have an empty workflow and i have a sales spreadsheet so you can go i will make this spreadsheet public and share the link you can copy and paste into your spreadsheet in your account or you can go ahead and use any spreadsheet and see how it works so the first thing that we'll need is to add a trigger node the trigger node will choose this trigger manually and after triggering we will need to connect our N8N to our Google Sheets uh, node. So we we'll need sheet Google Sheets node. And in action, we'll choose the get rows in sheet. So we want to get each row. Uh, Google Sheets, uh, this node doesn't perform a way to get all of them together. So we'll be getting one by one. So the first thing that you need is credentials. You'll go ahead and sign in. It's very straightforward and resources sheet within document and operation is get rows and the document we are going to choose the cells my google sheets uh, document is called cells and we're going to choose the sheet one and immediately test the workflow so we have nine items that means that uh, this node outputted nine results and now that we have our non results, what does it mean? And you have to pay attention on this point. It means that every node that I'm going to run on this step will be run nine times. So this is a mistake I used to do. And it's a mistake a lot of people who are new to N8N do. And basically here, the next step is to tell AI, okay, go through this Google Sheets data and take all the data and try to perform the insert queries and all the postgres operation so i would come here and choose open ai i choose the message model and immediately uh perform all the operation give it the instruction but this is actually not true because this will run nine times and remember you're using open ai api so imagine if this sales sheet was a million rows so that means a million rows will uh, be input in the model nine times so you'll be consuming a lot of tokens and we don't need that so to solve that we need to find a way to put those nine items into one variable and we use the aggregate node combine all the fields into one so here in aggregate we need to all item data into single list and let's name them transactions transactions and we have all our transactions in an array of data or combined together into one variable called transaction so now we are going to go ahead and use this one item instead of nine items and now that we have our one item, which is an array of all the transaction, we are going to now use the OpenAI's uh, GPT model to actually uh, construct all our queries for us. So we need to add OpenAI message model. And we'll first of all add the credentials. It's very straightforward. You have to head to uh, platform.openai.com slash api keys and then you'll get your api key we need the text we need the message model and i will choose gpt for gpt i will use gpt4 mini and for the instructions we are going to add a simple instruction i'm, I'm just going to copy and paste mine you can go ahead and and see it. The first one is to stringify the transaction. 
and we tell it to analyze this JSON and create Postgres insert queries for all the values into transaction table. The column will be in, the column names will be in snake case. Column names will be in snake case. Return a JSON of array of all insert, but on the first index, place a create table if it doesn't exist to first attempt creating the transactions table and let the key of all these queries be queries. So here we need to come here low and set output JSON and basically it will return a JSON and we will uh, all the queries will be stored in the queries uh, in the queries object field. So I'm going to go ahead and test also this step. And we have all our queries here. We have a query zero. The query zero attempt to, of course, create the table and the remaining queries, they will be the insert queries. And all of this operation, you can see that I haven't uh, written any of them, but the GPT model is uh, creating all of them for me. So now that we have our queries, we need to find a way to insert them into the Postgres database. So now that our GPT message model already created the queries for us, these are actually the operations we were talking about. If you remember well, it created the create table. Here is the, the first index in the create table and the remaining are insert ones. So imagine the time it will have taken us to construct this, but GPT model already created them for us. Now we need to find a way to actually run them. But the first thing that we need to do, each query will be run independently. I'll show you actually later. Basically, we are going to the next step will be to add Postgres and we'll choose the execute SQL model. So all of this action, they are like, uh, we have to execute uh, one at a time. So here is where, where we put our query. That's why we actually need to separate all of them. So to separate all of them, we need to use split, split out, and we will drag queries and drop into it here. And we will test the step. And as you can see, we have now 10 items. Now all each item will actually run independently. So the next step is to go ahead and connect to our Postgres and then run the all the 10 queries. So the first thing that we need to do is first of all, uh, connect it to a Postgres SQL node. To do so, we need to add a new node called Postgres and we need to choose an action. We'll choose execute SQL query. And basically here is where our query will be placed. We will use JSON. First of all, it will take JSON and it will take values. Now we have all the values, not stringified. And you will take, for each, we'll take the last one. So it will, first of all, this is the first item. For the second one, it will insert and the third one so it will be going through all of these queries putting them inside here so we need credentials that's a must we need a hosted database we cannot use a local one we are going to use a hosted one i like to use this service called railway you can go ahead and search it railway.com and it's very easy to deploy a postgres database here you can choose deploy and here you're going to search for Postgres SQL. So it's going to go ahead and create your Postgres database for you and deploy it immediately. So we're going to wait. So after all of this creation and deployment is finished, we need to fill all of these values with correct ones. So the first thing uh, that we need is to click here to connect and we need to choose public network and we are going to copy this connection URL and let's paste it here in my URL.
So the first thing that you need is the host. How will you get the host? You search for this at and then copy anything between it with the two dots and paste it in here. So the database will always be railway and the user will always be Postgres. We need the password though. To get the password, you'll come here and select all the value from these two dots to the at and paste it inside here. And we also need to fill the port. How to find the port? Come here and find the digits here and paste them here. So after that, we need to save. Connection tested successfully. Now we need to execute all our queries. So first of all, I'm going to go come here. You see that uh, I don't have any table. So I'm going to test step and it was successful. So I'm going to come back and you can see that now I have a transactions table. If I open it, you can see that all my data, all my nine values, nine rows has been well inserted. And this is a good sign that AI agent can actually perform anything. So in my next videos, we're going to go ahead and uh, do some complex things like chat with your Postgres. And hopefully this video was very useful. See you in the next one.